Have you ever seen a lizard squirting blood or a beetle shooting acid out of its legs? Fair enough, but did you know about the bird that can imitate a chainsaw? Watch closely because the lyre bird is just the bird that can do that. Found in southeastern Australia and southern Tasmania, the lyrebird has one of the most complicated and beautiful songs in the world. They will fly around in the forest gathering sounds. After they feel that they've mastered sounds from 20 different sources, it's time to start the mating call. The more complicated the sound, the better female the lyrebird can attract. And of course, all of this needs to be performed on a cleared patch of grass for visibility's sake. Once the bird starts singing, or rather imitating all of the sounds of nature, it accompanies this ceremony with a little dance. In the years past, they were only able to imitate the sounds of other animals, but nowadays they're often in contact with some foresters and wildlife photographers, and learn to imitate everything from chainsaws, ordinary saws, to a camera snapshot. This bird is surely going through a lot of effort just to attract a mate. I wonder what the raven would think of this. Edgar Allan Poe would be jumping with joy had he heard this raven saying nevermore several times in a row. Nevermore. Nevermore. But then when the raven started singing, waka waka, waka 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 So maybe the bird was trying to impress Shakira as well. Nevertheless, ravens are some of the most intelligent birds of the animal kingdom. They can use their voice box not only to imitate the human voice, but also to imitate the sounds of other animals. This is useful when they come across a giant animal carcass that hasn't yet been discovered by wolves. Since the raven cannot tear open the dead animal, it will imitate the sound of a predator, like a wolf for example. Hearing this, the wolf will come, feast on the animal's carcass, and then after having finished eating, the raven will swoop down and take whatever he fancies. How smart is that? Stegotivus lineatus This is a very small grey spider about 0.6 inches in length. Now, we're not even going to discuss the fact that males tend to eat their young after birth. What we want to focus on here is maternal care. You see, after the eggs are laid, the body of the female spider will start to produce increasing amounts of digestive enzymes. Even though this will allow the mother to digest more food, it will also start digesting her inside organs. After the little spiders are hatched, the mother will regurgitate all of the food she has stored, including her own organs. The young will eat about 95% of their mother, and then before finally dying, she'll call all of them to start feasting on the few remaining body parts until nothing but the exoskeleton is left. Iberian Rib Newt just like the name suggests, this newt can be found on the Iberian Peninsula and Morocco, it's about 12 inches in length, and has one of the strongest defense mechanisms out of all the animals we've mentioned so far. The tubercles running down its body serve a special purpose, through them the newt can force its ribs to puncture outward and start secreting venom from them. This is especially useful when there's a predator nearby. Why? Because the effective stinging mechanism of the ribs will allow the animal to inject the predator with venom and hopefully kill it before being devoured. And don't worry, this doesn't harm the newt's own body. It's immune to the venom and so are humans. Up next, we have the queen parrotfish. Oh look, a pretty color fish. Hey, wait a second. Why is that fish enveloped in a blue sphere? What is that? That's the mucus bubble that the parrotfish forms at night. Just before going to sleep, the queen parrotfish will form a mucus cocoon which will act as a shield from predators. Aside from making it more difficult to eat, it also hides the scent of the fish, making it practically invisible to predators. Also, the skin of this fish is covered in different mucus substance, which helps heal the fish's body. Queen parrotfish, or like queen mucus fish, right? Clownfish You see, Nemo is not as harmless as he might seem. These small fish can be found in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and there are about 30 different species. Now, these little guys do two strange things. The first one is their ability to change their sex. Since all of the clownfish are born male, the dominant female dies. The dominant male will change its sex and become the dominant female. The second crazy thing they do is strike up a symbiotic relationship with the sea anemone. This poisonous anemone is deadly to any fish that comes near it except for clownfish. Their skin secretes special mucus that protects them from the sting of the tentacles of the sea anemone. The mucus topic is not letting me go today. Komodo dragons. If you thought that the clownfish were crazy for changing their sexes, then listen up. The female Komodo dragon can fertilize itself asexually. Sure, they can procreate sexually, but if they cannot find a mate, then the female will take care of this fertilizing business herself. It's a process called parthenogenesis. Instead of the sperm fertilizing the egg, 
The egg of the Komodo dragon will fertilize another one of its eggs. Instead of the WZ sex chromosomes the female carries, it will create an egg with double Z sex chromosomes, just like the male and fertilize the eggs herself. Talk about girl power! Top 3 Number 3. Bombardier Beetle this is our favorite pick on the list. It's a giant bug that loves to eat ants. They can be found scattered on all the continents except Antarctica. Are rather small, only about one inch long, but in this case, size doesn't matter. What does matter is the bug's defense mechanisms. When the Bombardier beetle is ripping ants apart from its mandibles, it's not just devouring them. It's storing formic acid in its abdomen. The bug will later use this acid to ward off predators. As soon as some large animal draws near and intends on eating it, the Bombardier beetle will try to run away. If it can't, then it will turn its back and fire a powerful jet of acid out of two little glands on its legs. The formic acid will burn the animal and it'll run away. If devoured, the beetle can still shoot the acid directly inside the stomach of the predator, causing it to regurgitate immediately. Number 2. Blood Squirting Lizard This is a horned lizard. They're fairly small in size and they live in Mexico. Their favorite place to hang out is in a bar. It's near a cactus. They wait for some rotting fruit to fall off it, and when the ants come rushing to collect the bounty, the horned lizard comes to feast. It uses its tongue like a sniper, sticking and swallowing every ant on the ground. Even though the ants try to defend themselves, the horned lizard has tough skin, so instead of moving away, he'll just stay and keep munching. Eventually, if a large predator comes his way, there are several things the blood squirting lizard might do. First, it will remain motionless, using its body coloration as a camouflage. If that doesn't work, the horned lizard will puff up its body and seem more intimidating to the hungry coyote. Now, if for some reason the animal still doesn't back off, then the bottom eyelid of the lizard will swell up with blood. As the predator draws near, the horned lizard squirts a stream of its blood its way, confuse and shock the coyote, giving it enough time to escape the lightning fast speed. Number 1. Hackfish if you want to see a real-life dinosaur, then look no further than the hackfish. This animal has remained unchanged for about 3 million, oh pardon, that's 300 million years. Wait, what? That's right, these slimy snake-like creatures are the stuff of nightmares. The fish has a skull but it has no spine, it doesn't even have scales. So wait a second, how does this animal protect itself from predators? Well, if you look closely, you'll see that the skin of the hackfish is perforated. They have these little holes all over their body, some of them are used for breathing, but some are used for creating unbelievably thick mucus. This is not dangerous, but when some predator, let's say a shark, attacks the hackfish, they'll get a mouthful of slime. If the shark doesn't let go of the animal instantly, it risks suffocating because its gills will not be able to filter the water from all of that mucus. Most often, the hackfish releases this mucus during feeding time in order to keep predators at bay. Speaking of feeding, we should tell you that the scariest thing about the hackfish it has this disgusting jawless mouth that protrudes outward whenever there is a fish carcass nearby. They'll then latch onto the carcass and eat until nothing but bone remains. This is Koala with Koala content. See you soon. YouTube thinks that you should watch this video next.